What drew me to religious life, I would say, was a real desire to uh, develop my spiritual life and my relationship with God, uh, and also that to flow into a life of service to make a difference in the world and uh, to share that in a life of community. I'm Sister Lynn Mosel. I'm a member of the Congregation of the Humility of Mary based in Davenport, Iowa, and I will be making my life profession of vows in May 2011. Uh, it's really a great story how I met the Sisters of Humility. I was at the University of Kentucky uh, doing my training in child and adolescent psychiatry, and I heard about a vocations picnic uh, sponsored by the diocese. And uh, there I met Sister Marty Conrad, a Sister of Humility, uh, who was there at the time uh, doing outreach for the poor in the foothills of the Appalachians. And I just remember so clearly uh, sitting across from her at the picnic table, and we just really hit it off. And by the end of our time together, she had written on a napkin her name and phone number, and said, uh, call me sometime and, and we'll get together. And so I did call her and went to visit. And I was just so impressed how she treated everyone on the street with such dignity and respect. And uh, I loved her great sense of joy. Uh, we went for a lot of walks together. Uh, one time we even climbed a tree and sat there and talked for a while. Another thing that we did was travel to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and did a retreat together. And it was with that that I really began to get a sense of the spirituality of the Sisters of Humility. After getting to know Sister Marty for a while, uh, we eventually took a trip uh, to Davenport, Iowa, so that I could meet more of the Sisters. And it was really very providential at the time. Uh, the Sisters were studying uh, what does it mean to be a humility woman in the 21st century? And I was able to uh, be a part of some small group uh, discussions on that topic. And that really gave me a, a great sense of the spirit and the charism of the community. And I just really felt it very much resonated with me, and I began to feel that I could be at home with this group of women. The way I see the spirituality of the Sisters of Humility um, it, there's a real uh, value on simplicity, uh, also, of course, on humility. And you may think of humility as um, a, a meekness or, or being even passive, but the way I see it uh, manifested in the sisters is a real down-to-earth, unpretentious nature, even though many of them are highly educated. They really are able to use their gifts and develop them for the service of others. I never really thought about being a sister until I was an adult, uh, but I grew up in a Catholic family uh, with one older brother, Doug, who's two and a half years older. Going to Mass and being involved in our parish was very important, although Doug and I went to public school. So we never really got to know sisters growing up. I took piano lessons and loved music. I also developed a love for children uh, through babysitting. I got turned on to science in high school and decided to eventually go to medical school. It was in medical school that I got involved in a young adult Catholic group. And there were women that were coordinating this young adult Catholic group who really encouraged uh, those of us involved to develop our prayer lives. And I really believe that uh, planted a seed uh, for me to experience the call to religious life. So there I was, uh, 33 years old, uh, just finishing uh, my residency and ready to start a practice in child and adolescent psychiatry. But also I was very drawn to get to know the Sisters of Humility better. 
uh, I moved back to Omaha and got a position at the University of Nebraska. And at the same time, I became an associate member of the Sisters of Humility. I was an associate for uh, two years. And then at that point, um, I was really uh, feeling that I was ready to move forward uh, to become a vowed member, and so I requested that and was accepted to begin the process to become a vowed member. Uh, becoming a sister is at least a six-year process. Uh, the first year is the affiliate year, and then there are two years in the novitiate, and then you're eligible for uh, temporary vows. And then you have a period of at least three years under temporary vows. During the affiliate year, uh, for me that meant uh, moving to Des Moines, Iowa, where uh, many of our sisters live and getting to know them better. Uh, I had a job in child psychiatry and had my own apartment, but I became uh, very involved with the New Hope community in Des Moines. And at that time, that consisted of four of our sisters in Des Moines who had formed an intentional uh, community to be a Christ-like presence in a lower-income neighborhood in Des Moines. And they also had the idea of uh, inviting lay people to be involved as well. And also part of that New Hope community was Sister Ramona, my formation coordinator. I spent a lot of time with the New Hope community. I had dinner with them at least two nights uh, per week and prayed with them. I also uh, was involved with the Saturday morning uh, scripture group. Uh, I had the chance to get involved in the many peace and justice activities in Des Moines and also to attend community meetings such, such as our monthly Des Moines CHM meetings and attending our annual assembly during the summer. By the end of the year, it seemed like uh, things were going quite well, uh, both from my perspective and from the community's perspective, and so I was accepted to uh, proceed into the novitiate. The first year of the novitiate is called the canonical year, and that was a year in which I did not work for pay, but I had the entire year to really focus on a variety of relationships, and that included relationships with God through prayer, uh, relationships with community members, and uh, with those in need through some volunteering. It was wonderful uh, just to have the time uh, to spend in prayer and spiritual reading. Uh, and we did this. Um, some was one-on-one -on -one with Sister Ramona. Uh, some was within uh, small groups uh, with other sisters uh, in Des Moines. I even attended a scripture class um, with a variety of lay people, including deacons and those involved in religious education. In terms of my relationship with the community, I was able to uh, visit with our sisters uh, in the CHM wing at Bishop Drum Nursing Home in Des Moines, getting to hear their stories and their tales of how they built up the community during the last century. It was really an honor to be able to do that. I also was able to spend time with sisters in uh, Davenport and Ottumwa, Iowa, who could tell me uh, more about the history of our community. Of course, I also studied our community's uh, documents, such as our current Constitution uh, search and service. I also got to view a series of videos uh, called The Fantastic Faith Journey, put together by one of our sisters, which really outlined a lot of our history. In regards to relationships with those in need, um, one experience that was um, very meaningful to me was uh, getting to know a family who had uh, come from New Orleans after Hurricane uh, Katrina, and they lived in the apartment just across the hall from us. I got to know uh, one of the boys in the family who was 11 at the time, and we shared a great love of music. Sometimes he would come over and play my piano. And another thing that he did, uh, he would go to the Catholic Worker House with me and, and volunteer. And it was just such a neat experience uh, to be able to be another stable adult figure in his life, uh, certainly when he had been through such upheaval and loss. During the second year of the novitiate, uh, I went back to my ministry as a child psychiatrist. 
And the emphasis of that year was really on balance, uh, balancing the several aspects of religious life, including ministry, prayer, and community life. And certainly that's a lifelong work. Uh, I continue to be involved with the New Hope community and, and many of my activities that year, but more of the emphasis was on my ministry. And I have uh, continued with that um, after taking uh, my temporary vows. And uh, now that the temporary vows have been for a period of uh, over three years, I'm getting ready for life profession. I believe there are three things that women religious have to offer the world today. Those would be a spirit of contemplation in a world of so many distractions, uh, the emphasis of nonviolence in our violent world today, and also the example of people committed to one another in community. For me personally, in my ministry as a physician, uh, Medicine today has become so infiltrated by managed care and the business model. Being in religious life helps me to stay grounded in the midst of that and allows me to practice medicine from the heart. Mm -hmm.